Hey, good evening, my friends. Welcome to another edition of Wednesday Night Live right here on the Mike Avery Outdoors Facebook page and the Mike Avery Outdoors YouTube channel as well. My name is Mike Avery. Glad to have you along with us this evening on what is actually a beautiful Wednesday evening in my part of the world after some very, very nasty, forgive me while I adjust my camera, very, very nasty weather um, that has resulted in some flooding uh, and uh, just some, just some, just some terrible things. Hey, Craig, I didn't fish today, Craig. Good evening, Brian. How are you? Nice to have you along with us. Kevin, Coyote Killing Kevin, nice to have you with us as well. Um, I, again, you can see I'm, I'm still experimenting with this new uh, platform um, that I first played around with last, last week. How do you like my new graphics, by the way, folks? How do you like the new graphics up there, huh? Pretty cool. Uh, yes, I did get my boat over to the other side of the bay. Kevin. Brandon, Tim, Mike, Jason, Randy, how are you this evening, folks? Glad to have you along with us on this edition of uh, Wednesday Night Live. John Callison, you said you were going to join us again tonight. Martin? Uh, yeah, it looks pretty cool, doesn't it, Craig? It looks pretty cool. Uh, if you're new to this, uh, my name is Mike Avery. Uh, I do a radio show in uh, Michigan, 29 stations across the uh, great state of Michigan, but I also have uh, podcast uh, version of the show available anywhere in the world, literally on uh, all the major platforms, including my website, MikeAveryOutdoors.com. Uh, Richard, Joe, Eric, George, my big buddy, you say, did I get the boat out? Uh, Scott, I did. I moved it over from uh, the marina at the mouth of the river um, because I was concerned about the water that's going to come down through there. So I moved it over to Linwood Beach Marina that is a little bit more protected. And um, I, I feel good about doing that. I don't know what to expect when that water comes downstream, but the fact that I'm not going to have to deal with it, it makes me uh, feel pretty good. I'll tell you what, the ride across the bay was interesting. There is so much debris in the water already. The water looks like chocolate milk, and it was rough. I had a strong current coming downriver. I had a strong northeast northeast wind in my face. And at the mouth of the river, I had uh, uh, a legitimate four-foot waves. See, now look at this. Somebody should have warned you how addictive the freaking pickles are. They are, aren't they? Yeah, I can show your comments here. Uh, Bill Hoffman says, uh, heart rate. Bill Hoffman, the most interesting man in Michigan. Let's see what some of you are saying. Lori Card is saying good evening. Ron says, I hope you're safe. Ron, I am. Uh, I, I live in Midland, but I am safe because I live on the side of town that is farthest away from the river. Uh, Paul's checking in. He says, uh, Bonita Springs, no flood here. 8,000 acres of wildfires already. Seems like it's kind of early in the year for that, right? Huh. Well, good evening to Bob. Nice to have you along with us as well. My name is Mike Avery. This is uh, Wednesday Night Live on the Mike Avery Outdoors Facebook page and the Mike Avery Outdoors YouTube channel. Uh, Joe says he checked on his boat today. Good thing the lines were tight as banjo strings from the water rising. Yeah, it's, uh, it is, you can see the comments. Oh, you're on watching on YouTube. Excellent, Craig. I wondered how it looked on YouTube. And Craig says, I can see the comments really good on YouTube. Craig, you're hiding your picture. Let's see your picture here. Roger, how are you? Uh, somebody said, I see you had a chance. Who was this? I see you had a chance. To... I did, Melissa. And I told you, that is right down this, the road from where my grandkids live, two of my grandkids, and they had to be evacuated. So, And how did you get that picture? I know you're up on Lookout point, uh, Park, but how did you get there? It looked like it was flooded to get there. Uh, Dennis is along with us. George is along with us. Dan's along with us. And very, very soon... Uh, Kristen Monroe is going to join us as well. She's from Apex Marine. Oh, you, what do you say about your eye surgery? Got your eye surgery scheduled. Good for you, Dave. Good for Dave. My logo is blocked by the, uh, what does this one say? Hey, shut up. What? Oh, okay. Uh, you're, uh, Lake Escape. Absolutely. All right, I'm going to hide your comments here now so I can actually uh, get to work. I got I've got I got to find which one I was hiding here. Cindy, hide. All right. I got to find you, Jeff, so I Hey Ed, how are you? Nice to have you along with us again tonight. 
Where are you, Jeff? I got to find you to, so I can find your com, uh, hide your comment here. I tell you what, I'll just hide comments. How does that work? Doesn't work for there's Jeff. Hide. Okay. All right. This is a new system I'm playing with. I'm kind of getting used to it. As you can see, Ed Bolanowski of Speedy Blaze is with us as well. Ed, it was wonderful to have you along with us last week as we gave away some Speedy Blaze. And uh, Dave, you were talking about your eye surgery has been scheduled. Just an update on mine. I have uh, about 75% vision now in my right eye. I can see on the upper part of my eye very well. If I try to look down, I still don't have much vision there. But it's healing very well. So I feel very fortunate, very blessed. Uh, and Jeff says, poof, I'm gone. Just like that, Jeff, poof, you're gone. This is Memorial Weekend coming up. The unofficial kickoff of the summer season. Now, I realize that this Memorial season, this Memorial Weekend is going to be a little bit different, right? Just because the world is a little bit different. I would ask you this, though. As you are out this weekend grilling and barbecuing and picnicking and boating, if you can, and I encourage you to do all of those things, um, just please remember why we even have a Memorial Day, and that is to honor those who gave their lives so we can live in freedom or somewhat freedom, unless you're living under Gretchen Whitmer, then it's pseudo freedom, right? Did I say that or did I just think it? If I said it, I'm sorry that it came out of my mouth. Kind of, not really. Uh, a drone took it. Oh, that's how you did it, Melissa. You have a CC on Facebook, but not, what does that mean? You have a CC on uh, Facebook. I don't know what that means, Craig. Hey, Danny, I love the, uh, I didn't love, I, I, I found it interesting, the pictures you sent me of the flood from last night. Uh, Larry says, well, all right, my friends, if you, you know that one of the things I like to do on Wednesday Night Live is to give back to you a little bit, right? Because you have been supporters of mine for many, many years. You have been loyal listeners, loyal followers, and I appreciate that. So what I want to do is to... Um, Bring somebody on with us to now. Now, you know, we've been giving away. We started this whole thing out giving away Michigan brand hams. And then we went to Speedy Blaze. And then we went to Freaking Pickles. And now let's bring in Kristen Monroe. And we'll see what she. Kristen, good evening. How are you? Hi. Hey, Mike. Hi, Kim. Doing great. There we are. Nice to have you. Nice to have you along with us. Kristen is the marketing director for Apex Marine, the parent company of Angler Quest, Quest Pontoons, and now Polar Craft. Oh my gosh, you just blew my you just blew my trivia question. <laughs> I'll tell you why. Well, I can come up with a new you one. Should have given me a heads up. <laughs> if you want to hear what it was gonna be, it was gonna say, what are the other two yeah, yeah. besides Angler Quest, but you know what? I can come up with another one um, real quick because I was going to do a trivia question to or so we just randomly pick a person for the giveaway. I was going to like spice it up. Well, we can, you can, we can, what we can do in the past, and, and I'm sorry for raining on your parade, but what we can do is just we'll, <laughs> we'll have people make comments and you can, uh, and you can choose them from there. All right. Okay, Mike. You're Boy, we got a real long numbers. delay in your in your audio. Where, where 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 are you tonight, Kristen? Where are you tonight? I'm actually at Linwood. Linwood, can you hear me? Oh. Can you and hear me? for I can, but for some reason we have about a three second delay, so it's going to drive you and me crazy. I am going to remove you, and then I will bring you back, and let's see if that did anything, Kristen. Uh, like, am I, is my audio delayed to you? No, you are spot on as usual. I see yours is really. <laughs> uh, my TV is showing my shirt backwards. Okay. That's good to know because I don't know if I can. I might be able to. Uh, no, probably not. So maybe I'll have to. Okay, good to know. All right. So anyway, Kristen, how are things going at Apex Marine? Things are good. There was, um, you know, with everything going on, um, Nobody, you know, a lot of uncertainty, but I tell you what, the dealers are, they're selling boats again and um, things are good. I think that people are realizing that um, it's important to spend time with family and they're looking for new activities. And I do believe we're, we're um, getting some new, we're going to, we're going to get some new anglers, I think, out of, out of the tragedy, unfortunately. 
but um, good good thing that we're getting the anglers. Um, but I hear that the the stores are selling fishing lures like crazy, and I think the boats boats are doing well too. Wonderful. And people are telling me they don't see a delay or hear a delay. All I can do is hear the delay. So we want to give away what tonight, Kristen? Well, let's do some Angler Quest gear, maybe some a hoodie. Um, Angler Quest dot at, at the on our website we have an apparel line that we launched with lots of different hoodie choices. And um we've got this one. Oh, that's the one I have. <laughs> That's my favorite. Isn't that great? The face mask you yeah, can use. Yeah, I can wear it and I can wear it in Meyer as my face mask. <laughs> well, it's a, actually an Aqua brand, so it's a good brand. It's um, lots of different choices on the site. But how about we give away a, a hoodie? Of a hoodie. Your fan, one of your fans' choices. So whatever they right. like on the on the website. So what we're gonna do now? is you have five minutes, my friends, to make a comment about why you want to win an Angler Quest hoodie. Kristen Monroe is, can you see the comments, Kristen? Um, I can now. I can read okay. the comments, but I don't know if my video went away or not, but I can see the comments. Okay, I can see. Okay, so Kristen is going to uh, uh, watch these comments. You have five minutes. All right, friends, you know how this works. Five minutes, you make a comment on why you want to win an Angler Quest hoodie. Kristen Monroe is watching your comments. At the end of five minutes, you will hear the annoying ah at the end of the contest, and we will let you know who <laughs> wins, and then we'll talk to Kristen for a couple of minutes more. So, Kristen, you keep an eye on these. I'm going to talk for a couple of minutes about Angler Quest. Also, somebody said my logo is, is uh, backwards. Um, you know I know how to turn that around in Facebook, but I don't necessarily – know how to turn it around here. So maybe, all right, so I appreciate you letting me know that. I have been a big fan of Angler Quest and Apex since they came out with the Angler Quest. I saw the very first prototype boat. It was sitting on the grass at an outdoor show in Freeland. I said, I am fascinated by this. When I found out it was a Michigan-based company, I said, I need to work with those people. And I've been working with Angler Quest ever since. I think I've had four different Angler Quest boats now. I absolutely love them. I think they're a wonderful company. Uh, you want a hoodie so you can go as Mike Avery for Halloween. Bill, you will never be cool enough to go as Mike Avery until you shave your head, and then you can. Lori says she will. Oh, I'll show some of the comments here. I said, yeah, here. I need a size like Mike's. Love Angler Quest. Excellent. Who have we got here now? This is, uh, I want to be dressed uh, like Mike Avery with an awesome hoodie. Craig, you could pull it off. You're a big guy. Uh Dance is uh, big enough for you. Oh, they will, Dan. There's one big enough for everybody. Angler Quest, a, a great Michigan brand company. You bet. Uh, because anyone that Mike will buy from has to be top quality and amazing workmanship. Very true. Top quality. There's no doubt about that. And uh, Johnny says, since he's in the UP, it's always so cold. So he'd love to have a new one. Absolutely. All right, my friends, you've got uh, three and a half minutes to make your comments. Three and a half minutes. Jim Goss says, as a veteran, I see you pulled the veteran card, didn't you, Jim? That's going to be a hard one oh, to beat. Man. Yeah, that there you go. Uh, uh, okay. Now, this is Kristen Monroe. She is the marketing director for Angler Quest and Quest Pontoons and Polar Craft. She was going to use that as her trivia question, and I screwed her up. You've got three minutes to make your comments. Three minutes to make your comments on why you want to win an Angler Quest hoodie. I have uh, several Angler Quest pieces of clothing, and I absolutely love them. you got two and a half minutes. You know what? I don't really look at my clock, my watch, right? Two and a half minutes. Two and a half minutes on why you should win a piece of Angler Quest clothing. There we go. So Kristen can still hear me. All right, you got two minutes. Two minutes on why you should win some Angler Quest clothing. Make your comments here um, creative. Make it hard for Kristen to choose. Make it hard for Kristen to choose which one she wants. Uh, you love the guests you have, Mike. Always That's awesome. I appreciate you saying a minute and a half. A minute and a half on the Angler Quest hoodie, why you want to win one. I do like that black one Kristen has there. And I might put my order in for one as well. A uh, minute and a half on the Angler Quest hoodie. Why you want to win one? Make your comments. Make your comments. And uh, Kristen Monroe from Apex Marine will be choosing. One minute now. You notice I keep looking at my watch. I'm not looking at my watch. One minute. One minute on the uh, comments on why you want to win an Angler Quest hoodie. If the hoodies are top quality like the boats are, and I know they are, 
it's a good piece of gear. 30 seconds, 30 seconds on why you want to win an Angler Quest hoodie. Now, my friends who have been with us before, you know what to expect. Kristen doesn't know what to expect. I have to take a drink of water. Kristen does not know what to expect. Everybody else does. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's the end of the contest. You know what that means. And Kristen, did you pick a winner for us? Yes, I pick John Miller because he knew a specific. He said he loves the Pro Troll 24, and I, I like that he knew the an actual model. So, uh, <laughs> Alex, sorry, I couldn't pick, pick pick more people. Maybe we can do it again. Sometime. We can certainly do it again. Now, who did who'd you say it was? Uh, John Miller. John Miller. All right, I'm looking for I'm looking for John, John Miller. It's up at the top. All right, I want to look for his comments here because I want to show it if I can. Again, this is all kind of a, a live experiment here. All right, I don't see it, but you said he picked, he knew that a model. All right, so John, uh, John, what if we would do, John, if you would um, give me your contact info, I will pass it along to Kristen and you guys can uh, figure out how to get that to you. All right, Kristen, listen, um, you started with Apex, what, last summer now? I started in July, July 15th to be exact, but I worked with them um, for a few years before that as media and um, also through an advertising agency. So I've had a relationship with Apex for about three years, but I started officially July 15th. And how are things going? I mean, you went through a really rough time here now with the COVID thing. The factory was shut down for a while, but I tell you what, like my perception is, Angler Quest is people are catching on. People know who Angler Quest is now. Yeah, definitely. It's um it's a unique brand because it's in between, you know, the hardcore fishing market and it's also making them more comfortable and get getting out on the bigger water and um it become the challenge is getting people to know that if you have a tri tune on, you can fish in the bigger water. So that's one of my hurdles, but the quality and the feedback and um, I mean, it's been so positive and it really is catching on. And, you know, that's the best case and an example of that would be just looking in the Linwood Marina. There's a lot of angler quests out there and it's because they see it and they are on it and it's contagious, I think. And people love them. Once you fish it, you realize that they can perform. Absolutely. That, that big triple tube with a big uh, motor behind you, and you're all set. Kristen, listen, I appreciate you joining us on this edition of Wednesday Night Live. This is a format that I'm just kind of playing with now. I'll continue to tweak it, and I'd love to have you back on with us sometime, if you don't mind. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Mike. You're doing great. Love listening to your podcast, too. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, Kristen, have a good night. Kristen Monroe from uh, Apex Marine. And yes, uh, I see what you mean now about my logo backwards. Let me tell you about this setup I have here tonight. I started using my webcam last week through this new StreamYard uh, thing that I'm doing with the different logos and the you know the the, the graphics here, and I can bring in guests. Um, but I didn't like the quality of it, so I found a way to tether my iPhone to my laptop and use my iPhone as my uh, camera. But now I see this is backwards, so I got to figure out how to play around with this a little bit more to see if there is, would you look at that? Would you look at that? I rest my case. That's how we do it. Okay, so we're good to go. All right. Anyway, thank you to Kristen Monroe for uh, joining us. And congrats to John, John Miller. You will love the Angler Quest uh, hoodie. All right, so let's talk about some things. Um, terrible situation in Midland County in Michigan right now uh, with the flooding, uh, the dam uh, breached. Uh, Roger said so many boats were destroyed with all the rain. People should look into an angler quest to replace their lost or destroyed boats. Um, yeah, <laughs> like, ta-da, magic. <laughs> 
Oh, I have fun with it, if nothing else, right? But you know, it doesn't take much to uh it doesn't take much to make me happy. Like this right here. That is so cool. Um I took my angler quest out of the mouth of the Saginaw River today and I ran it over to Linwood Beach just because I don't know what's coming. I don't know what's coming down that river. Is it going to raise the water level two feet and be no big deal? Or is it going to raise it uh, uh, five or six feet? I know there's a bunch of debris floating down. It was a pretty surprisingly hairy ride across the bay. But of course, the angler quest can take it. That's for sure. Um, I, you know what I find interesting is... That even in today's technologically advanced and astute world, that Mother Nature occasionally decides she has to bring us to our knees and remind us who is in charge. And I'm thinking now about these floods. Um, you know, I can play with all this technological stuff right here. And, you know, we've all got computers and cell phones in our hands. But when it comes right down to it, Mother Nature still controls us. Mother Nature decides whether we're going to have a good day or a bad day. And for a lot of people right now, she's deciding it's a bad day. I just find that fascinating that even in today's world, you know me, I like it. There we go. That even in today's world, uh, Mother Nature is always in Gladwin County, too. Yes, Jason, you're absolutely right. Jason, was it you who was telling me this morning when I was uh, had some confusion on whether the Sanford Dam had, uh, had breached or not? You were telling me that. Oh, something I want to show you. I forgot I was going to do this. So I'll grab it now. I got a letter. I got a letter last week from Department of Homeland Security, U.S. Coast Guard. And I got excited because I thought, there's my captain's license. There's my charter captain's license. And it wasn't. All it is is this, which is my Coast Guard medical card. What does that do? I don't know what that does. Yeah. The river quested at uh, 35 feet, which is what? Three feet below what they were fearing. Can I tell you, because Bill Hoffman hasn't asked me yet. Can I tell you who's on the outdoor magazine radio show this week? Oh, I see what you're saying now. Do, okay. Are you seeing, I think I know what you're saying now, folks. Um, that banner up there that says live that covers my graphic, doesn't it? Yes, I see what you're saying. So I want to move that down a little bit. I see what you're saying. Yeah. All right. I'll move that down. See, this is a learning experience. This is all new to me because Bill Hoffman didn't ask. I'll tell you who's on the show this week. Chad Stewart from the DNR. And he's talking about uh, white tail fawns. It was nice to talk about something other than CWD and COVID-19 and floods. Uh, so it was really a kind of a nice conversation. Uh, Brenda Archambault also joins me. She's the Sturgeon General to talk about the Sturgeon spawning season. How cool is that? Uh, Ron, Ron says, when you think you are in control, Mother Nature proves you wrong. Isn't that the case? Um, and I find that interesting, fascinating. Yes, I see what you mean. That banner right there covers my banner. So I can fix that. Now that I know it's there, I have the technology. And then Ian Fitzgerald along with me. Ian talks about the fact that there was... Uh, uh, turkey licenses were the sales were up 30% this year. He attributes much of that to the Saturday opener. I think that was a factor because I heard more shots on the opening day of turkey season this year than I actually did on the opening day of uh, gun season, firearm deer season. And he also talks about a proposal to put uh, blaze orange on ground blinds, to which I say, why? I haven't heard of any problems with people being shot while they're in their ground blinds. I mean, I'm sure it's happened, but is it a problem bad enough that we have to enact a law to fix it? Richard said both dams breached. Edenville was built in 1924 and Sanford was built in 1925. They need to be replaced. Obviously, they need to be replaced now, right? I, 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 I'm not a big fan of stuff of putting laws or rules or regulations into place that have no purpose. And there doesn't seem to be a purpose in putting a law in place that says we have to have blaze orange on a ground blind. If there's a problem, okay, but there doesn't seem to be a problem. Robert says, if you have boats on sea cord or small wood, you have three days to get them out of the water. I 
I moved mine. It's not on those lakes, but I moved mine. And then in hour number three, Joe Marion. Uh, talking about uh, boating safety. Um, Dennis, are you saying why is that on three days to get him out of the water? That's a good question. Why is that, by the way? Joe Marion, a Coast Guard uh, 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 um, a fishing charter out of Ludington. He's also a retired Coast Guardsman. He talks about how to base, be safe on the water, but it wasn't your boring boating safety conversation. Um, Joe's a fun guy to talk with. And then, of course, wild game chef extraordinaire Dave Miner. He had a fish recipe, and if I remember right, it was a salmon recipe. I think that's what it was, a salmon recipe. Also today, I recorded another um, Killer Food Plots podcast and an Angler Quest podcast today, by the way, as well. Now, I want to tell you about this week's Ask Avery question, brought to you by Security Credit Union, Security Credit Union, CEO, uh, CU, Security securitycu.org, uh, so they can lower the lake level to do repairs. Gotcha. Is Ed on the show? Uh, he's on the radio show this week, Ed Bolanowski. Ed Rutherford is on the show. Ed, probably the longest active charter captain on the Great Lakes, certainly Lake Huron. 51 years, he's been a working charter captain. We talk about the northern uh, Lake Huron fishery, including uh, the lack of king salmon there, the uh, hopes they have for the Atlantic salmon. Uh, Lori says she misses uh, going to Oscar and Joey's. Uh, so do I. And when things get back to where they should or back to some semblance of normal um, and we can do some kind of a Wednesday night live back in the field and we can invite our friends, you, and feel comfortable about it and people will feel comfortable to show up, the first two we're going to do will be Oscar and Joey's and the Lumberjack Restaurant in West Branch, because these people have been, um, their their restaurants have been empty for too long. So we're going to see if we can help them out. Brian Feeney from Traverse City asks this week's Ask Avery question. And the way we can do that, the way you can ask me a question is send me an email to mike at mikeaveryoutdoors.com or hit me up here on the Facebook page or the YouTube channel or Instagram, mike at mikeaveryoutdoors.com. Brian says, forgive me, if this, yeah, 51 years, isn't that impressive, Dan? 51 years he's been out there. Uh, Brian Feeney from Traverse City says, uh, forgive me if this has already been asked, but is if, if your boat registration has lapsed and the Secretary of State does not send you a new three-year three year registration and boat registration sticker, despite the fact that you've mailed in your registration renewal payment, can you put your boat on the water in Michigan this summer without receiving a violation from a Michigan conservation officer? That's a great question, isn't it? Because so many things have been slowed down this year by the, by the virus and how it has pretty much shut down a lot of government agencies. Uh, Sal says the graphics are good in opposite corners on YouTube. Isn't that interesting? Very interesting. I will continue to uh, to play with these, right? Like, I can get rid of that. I can hide it. See what I mean? I can hide it and make it go away, but I want to see it. But I want don't want it to be hidden. Let me go back to the comments. All right, so um, I didn't know the... Uh, uh, John says he's been waiting for your new boat registration and plates, etc., the governor put a rule into effect that there was a grace period on your driver's license, your Michigan driver's license, and your uh, vehicle registration. But nothing was said about boat registrations. So I posed this question to the DNR. <clears throat> Ed Golson, who is the uh, chief information officer for the DNR, said, our intent is that in most cases, citations would not be issued in the situation described unless there are unique circumstances. We have asked officers to use their best discretion. So based on that, if you just look at it real quick, it's like, okay, well, you, you can get away with it for a while. I get nervous, though, when I hear things like it's our intent and we have asked officers to use their best discretion. I think what it comes down to is if you are a decent person to the CO, they'll be decent back to you. 
they're people just like we are. If you treat them with respect, I think they will treat you with respect. And they realize that the government has been shut down. And if you tell them, look, at, I've sent my payment in. I just don't have it yet. I would like to think you would be okay. Craig says, just carry your receipt with you. I would like to think you'd be okay. Um, but if you get somebody on the wrong day and they're in a bad mood and they had a fight with their spouse, or if you decide you want to be a jerk about it, yeah, you might get a ticket. My dad, who was a cop for 35 years, always taught me, you treat those guys with respect. When they come up to your car, you show them the respect and they will show you respect or your boat. Now, having said that about having some leeway with the boat registration, <clears throat> there are certain things that I would not carry this over onto. For example, your CPL, your concealed pistol license. Mine was up for renewal. I renewed it online and I was able to get it before my CPL expired. But that is not something I would take a chance with. I would not carry a gun if my CPL was expired. I probably would drive a vehicle or run a boat if my registration was expired, but I had taken efforts to get that renewed. But I would certainly not, like for my charter captain's license, <clears throat> I'm waiting for the paperwork. I've passed all the tests. I've submitted all the paperwork, but I don't have that in my pocket. Now, if I was planning on running paid charters, I would not do that until that license came through. Uh, Jim said they told him to carry a copy of his check. That makes sense, too. Absolutely. So, Brian, thank you for uh, asking a question on this week's Ask Avery segment. Uh, that's the answer, the best I could come up with. And I think it's a pretty decent answer. Again, if you want to ask me a question for the Ask Avery segment that appears both on Wednesday Night Live and on the Outdoor Magazine radio show, uh, send it to me via email, mike at mikeavoryoutdoors.com, mike at mikeavoryoutdoors.com, or hit me up here on YouTube or Facebook or any of the other social media outlets you can find me all over the place. Oh, he said, by the way, hope your vision is improving. Prayers for healing. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate that. My vision is improving. My vision is pretty good. I got no complaints. I mean, even if it stayed like it is right now for the rest of my life and I had to go through life like this, it wouldn't be the worst thing. I want it to get better, but it wouldn't be the worst thing. All right, my friends, uh, what else is going on? We got a couple more minutes here. <clears throat> Uh, Wayne says he did. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you what Wayne says. Wayne says uh, we did the online renewal for our license plate, and the tags came in the mail three days later. Wow. Richard says print uh, print the order and receipt that shows that you paid it. That makes sense. And Jim says they told me to carry a copy of my check. See, do you like this part right here where I can show your comments? That is pretty cool. Uh, John says. We've been waiting since the second week of week of March. They were told uh, we were told they were being lenient, and that's pretty much what the DNR is telling me. And Dan says, "Great question." So I'm really liking this new setup. Uh, I continue to tweak it a little bit. Like I said, obviously I need to get rid of my my banner there somehow. Randall says, or the cancel check. And Tim says, had to go for a few, missed everything. And Tim, I know you, and that doesn't your 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 picture. If it looked like you as a kid, it doesn't look like you now. Let's just let's just leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. And people tell me, well, Avery, your pictures of you that have hair, and now you don't have hair. And I didn't just lose all my hair. I just decided to shave it off. It just seemed like the thing to do. You can't get in to get your hair cut now anyway, so why not just get rid of it? And I don't have to deal with it. Wayne says he likes the new setup. Wayne, fun to do this, uh, this, this up. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. I, it, it provides a lot of options. Um, next week, <clears throat> we'll get Ed Bolanowski uh, back on to give away some Speedy Blaze. Speedy Blaze, the, the uh, great alternative to, to real wood because it's made with uh, you know uh, uh, real wood, real hardwood. Ordered your Sunday, got it in the mail on Monday. New setup is awesome. Okay, how do I? hide. There we go. Uh, so we will continue to do giveaways here on Wednesday night live every night. I mean, every Wednesday night, at least as long as companies I work with are willing to do giveaways. Um, you know, I, I, a chubby kid, the chubby adult. <laughs> That's not true, Tim. Uh, Sam says he's almost, I'll, I'll show you what Sam says. Sam says, 
He's almost to that point himself. Hey, sometimes you just got to take matters into your own hands. If you can't go get your hair cut, you can get your hair cut. Just cut it yourself. Oh, you, know, you know what I found out, though? As I kept going shorter and shorter and shorter, and now I just blatantly use a razor on my head to shave my head. Um, it's really shaving your head, if you haven't done it before, is kind of hard. And when you cut your head, your scalp, it bleeds like crazy. Um, John says the best way to get your info to me, John, if I don't know if you're watching me on YouTube or Facebook, if you're watching me on Facebook, just send me a private message or just send me an email to Mike at Mike Avery outdoors.com. Mike at Mike Avery outdoors.com. Give me your contact info and I will pa pass it along to, uh, Kristen. Tom says giveaway while on in the bay giveaway while in the bay giveaway giveaway while a giveaway while in the bay Tom I was on the bay today and it's going to be a while before I get back out there again it was rough Steve says he turned his phone sideways your logo's in the upper left huh ah uh, Planted these ticks. A lot of ticks, aren't there? A lot of ticks this year. I don't know why that is. Uh, Tom, I was on the bay today. You know where I keep my boat, right? Uh, there at the mouth of the river. I was very concerned that all the flood water was going to come downstairs, downstairs, down river, and cause some damage to my... Brian, Brian, I just quoted you. The man... Uh, right there. Brian, I just quoted you for this week's Ask Avery segment. Were you there to hear it? And you're on the radio show as well. Walleye frying in the lake. Anyway, Tom, I took my boat over to Linwood Beach Marina to get it out of that flood water. And it's already nasty. You cut the sides. More ticks than morels this year. Hey, Harry, how you doing, buddy? Oh, then you'll have to watch it, Brian. You'll have to watch it. But I, I, I like this setup. I think it I think it shows some promise. Also, before I let you go, um, I realize that bad things happen to bad people everywhere in this world. And the COVID's a great example of that. Um, but here in my where I live, this part of the state where I live right now, there is some very serious flooding. All of this water is going to work its way down the Titabawassee. It's going to go down through Saginaw. It's going to go down into Bay City. And um, it's, it's, it's amazing to me what Mother Nature can do when she gets pissed off. And she was pissed off the other day. I never thought I would see water levels like the flood of 86. They called that the thousand-year flood. Well, we had another one, what, 14 years later? Uh, I never thought in my lifetime I'd see another thousand year flood, but then again, I never thought I'd see a, a worldwide pandemic either. If we put faith in ourselves, it doesn't work. Got to put it somewhere else. All right, my friends, I think I'm going to wrap this one up just a little bit early tonight because I feel like I'm rambling and I don't like it when I ramp. Opinion. All right. A couple more opinion on the DNR proposal on hunting regulations. Which one, Brian? I was talking earlier. I do not like the idea of the requirement to put blaze orange on ground blinds. I think it's ridiculous because I don't know. Uh, was I alive for Woodstock? No, I was not alive for Woodstock. 24 years, 86, 96. You're right. 24 years. Thank you, Chris. Wow. 24 years. Um, I said earlier, I do not like the proposed, the proposal to put blaze orange on ground blinds because I don't see a problem. I don't see people getting shot while in their ground blinds, at least to the level that we need to put blaze orange on our blinds to pre uh, prevent it. And why would we want to put a law into effect if there's not a reason to? We've got enough laws and regulations and rules. You know, let's not let's not put things in place that there's really no need for. So I am I am against that one. Uh, Joe says debris in the water will be ethic. Mike says faith over fear. Amen to that. Uh, Wayne says he likes the orange on blinds. Safety is king. But Wayne, 
if 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 we're not having a problem with people getting shot while in their ground blinds, then apparently safety isn't a problem. It's just an excuse to put another regulation on us. At least that's the way I look at it. Uh, all right, my friends, I appreciate you joining me on this edition of Wednesday Night Live on the Mike Avery Outdoors Facebook page and the Mike Avery Outdoors YouTube channel. I will continue to tweak this setup a little bit to, to move some logos around, uh, to move some graphics around, but I really like the way this looks. I like the way this is coming together, and I think there's a lot of potential. And what we might do in the future, and I just thought of this right now, Flood of 86 was 34 years ago. Really? 86, 96, 2006, 2016. Oh my goodness. I thought it was 14 years ago. It's 34 years ago. I remember it like it was yesterday because I was working at TV5 at the time and I covered that 34 years. I don't care if it's easier for the COs to see the blinds. Jason, do you? If I'm not doing anything wrong, I don't really see a need for the CEO to know where I am. I've got, I got nothing to hide. I never have anything to hide, but why? It wasn't until the sun came up that I saw a blind in the direction I shoot opening day. But would Blaze Orange have helped that? Yeah, I hope to be back on the bay soon, Tom. That's for sure. Woodstock was the last pandemic. Well, I wasn't around for that one. You know what, Sam? It has been a long day. But honestly, I didn't realize 1986 was 34 years ago. And that says, on that happy note, as Avery slips slowly into senility, it might be it might be time to wrap up this edition of Wednesday Night Live. Yeah, the picture's clear. The audio's good. It is a nice setup. I really like it. Really like it. Uh, am I ever going to show my mounts? Well. I can show you a couple of them right now. I'm not going to show them all to you. Bear, coyote, turkey, bear, turkey, springbuck, bear, wolf, wildebeest, bear, gemsbuck. So you got you got the you got the 25 cent tour right there. I'll go through them all sometime. All right, my friends, thank you for joining me on this edition of uh, Wednesday Night Live. Appreciate you being along. Congrats to John Miller. And oh, what I started to say is I might do something in the future where I might actually bring some of you on with me. You know, wouldn't that be cool? Say you're uh, you're watching from you're out in the boat or you're in deer camp or something and you say, hey, Avery, I got something cool going on. I could invite you. Whoa, I could invite you to join me. Wouldn't that be cool? All right, my friends, have a good night. That is way too close on me. Have a good night, my friends. Thanks for joining me on this edition of Wednesday Night Live. Yes, end broadcast.